Hello guys, and welcome to another replay analysis. With me, your host, Vibe, the nicest guy in StarCraft. Hey, Vibe, Seems you just so fucked up my intro. To start a YouTube video. Hey guys, and welcome back to another replay analysis. With me, Vibe, the nicest guy in StarCraft. <laughs> and uh, today, <laughs> we're, go we're going on a... Gold level TVZ, all right? <laughs> TVZ. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna see what you're doing. We're gonna <laughs> we're, we're gonna see what happens here. Uh, <clears throat> sorry guys, I don't know what's so funny. My bad. Um. Yeah, see your build. Let's see what you're going for. <laughs> Uh, Alright, so one thing I I, def I definitely recommend uh, Okay, good, you're doing it. I was gonna say you should definitely at least scout if your opponent's gonna go for a natural And you can send out like SCV-17 or something like that Just to see, just to make your life easy and see if you're gonna get early pooled or not Because it allows you to put your CC on the low ground safely or you know high ground CC And you see a command uh, hatchery so you know you're good This guy's an a-hole equals 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 greater than Sorry guys, I apologize about that bot it's broken. We'll get it fixed. Uh, thank you, Pengi Archon. Much love. Okay, so we have a uh, you know a standard build from a standard build from Zerg, and a standard build from you so far. Reaper Fast Factory. Uh, nothing I can really tell. Okay, so let's just back it up really quick. Nothing about your build so far looks bad. I want to see how often you re you continue to make SCVs. I want to see if you ever have idle idle dead time in here. Do you have idle time in your command center? Let's find out. <coughs> so far, you're doing a good job. Okay, that was that was a little bit of idle time there, and I think you're probably microing your SCV for a second. Uh, definitely know that all you need to know, this is all you need to know, okay? I'm going to give you a tip here. You could literally, uh, you, you don't actually, if you're going to scout, so, you just, okay, let me, let me say it like this. If you scout with the SCV who builds the barracks, scouting into his base could make a little bit more sense there because the Zerg will already have decided if he's going to go for something gas heavy. We're talking about beyond 100, Okay. But if you're going to scout with SCV like 16 or SCV 17, so before you're at your, the, the SCV is done building the barracks, if you're going to already go to his base with a scout, it's kind of irrelevant to scout into his base. And here's why. Based off of the hatchery timing, you can tell what his gas is. So right now, without even looking at it, okay, I'm, I haven't looked at it yet. And this, I know he has a gas, but without even looking at how much he's mined, at this point in time, this Zerg has mined less than 100. We're talking probably has mined like 30 i'm gonna guess around like 28 gas okay my guess is 28 gas has been mined so far uh there's actually fucking a number up here that i could look at and cheat but i'm not okay i'm, I'm a nice guy i'm not cheating he's mined zero so far but if this guy was doing a standard build <coughs> 28 would be kind of practical right now and why is that you ask because if you look at the hatchery build time the the fact that he's got a hatchery that's this far along off of how early you scouted and you the fact that you don't have like you get basically what we're trying to say what i'm trying to say is he's gotten hatchery first if he goes hatchery first there's no chance he's going to have a gas really 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 early and like this really weird all-in is going to hit you so scouting into his main makes no sense you don't need to do that you could be like oh cool his hatchery is like really far along off of your early scout and you could just go back home and you know for a fact I mean, you, you, I, if you just got into his base, though, you can see if he's going to go gas lists, I guess. So that, that is a thing. But the big point I'm trying to make here is, is this is already all the information you need so far. Because it tells you that it's hatchery first. And doing something like not missing your orbital command is more of a priority now than confirming what it is. That is the big one. And let's see how many seconds go by when you... At 127 is when it starts. Your command center's idle. How long does it take you to do something with it? Ready. 
So you build it, and then you cancel it, and you make an orbital. And now you start an orbital at 136. So it took you nine seconds to make an orbital. And why did that happen like that? Because you were scouting his base with an SCV. So that's the only reason why I'm kind of like talking about this for a bit longer than I feel like I need to. Uh, your scouting doesn't have to be super technical, especially in Gold League. Uh, all you really want to know is did he expand at a normal time or not? And if you scout with like SCV-16 or SCV-17, if the hatchery is like halfway done <clears throat> by the time you get there you and your command center hasn't even started yet, you already know, okay, yeah, hatchery first, we're fine. We're not going to get all in right now. But if you see no hatchery at all, or you see a hatchery that like just started, then that would be room for, okay, he's either doing a one base all in with like Ravagers or something like that, or a Ling Bane bust, or he's going for a delayed natural to do some type of harassment. That's what that would mean. And all you would have to see is the natural for that information. But this is definitely a priority. Like you, you I would say your build is already behind now a little bit because like you've already, and it's not even just the fact that your build is behind your opponent. Your build is behind where you could be already, even though nothing has happened. Because that nine seconds on your command center is actually pretty fucking massive. Because this command center, it's it's not just going to do something once and you're done. It's every SCV now is going to be nine seconds behind, nine seconds behind, nine seconds behind, nine seconds behind. And that's if you don't mess up again. Your orbital is going to be nine seconds behind. Like every, like this, this first initial command center is so important about setting the pace of your build economically. So that's, that, you know, that's a huge deal. Stuff like that will definitely screw you. And then it's done. And there you go, now you're starting to make SCVs again. It was a little bit of a delay again there, though. But your priority should not be stuff like this. Like, I know what you're doing right now, okay? You're like, you know what, Vibe? I've watched high-level Terran players block the third base with an SCV so that the Zerg can't take a third, and then the Reaper comes over here and harasses and constantly kills the drones that try to take a third, and you can make the Zerg's economy delayed really hard because you're annoying with the Reaper and an SCV. I know exactly what you're doing, but I'm going to tell you right now that you should not be doing this in Gold League. This is by far above and beyond what you even need to do. Like you can see your opponent hasn't even attempted to take a third yet, which means your opponent doesn't even fully comprehend his situation anyways. And uh, against, you know, like he, he should have already tried to take a third if he would have known you're going for a Reaper expand. Uh, and he's gonna, if he were to go for Speedling Opener, which is what he's doing. But he's look, look, look at this though. He's like still mining gas with three. Like, people in Gold League fuck up their builds all the time. And when you try to do fancy stuff like this, all you really do is you fuck your build up again even more. So I would highly recommend getting away from stuff that's like this. Where you're... Stop trying to disrupt your opponent's build and just focus on perfecting your own build. Because the more time you spend on disrupting your opponent's build, the more it's actually going to disrupt your own build. I guarantee it. That's uh, that's that's definitely a fact of StarCraft right there. <laughs> All right, you're going for uh, Hellion harass now. So again, uh. Like, I mean, you're you're being very aggressive. You're trying to be doing sh stuff on the map. You're again trying to disrupt your opponent's build, hard like hardcore. You're uh, not making any SVs in your natural. You're not okay. You're starting SVs again. Your build is not actually. I'll say this for Gold League. You're doing a pretty good job of multitasking it for Gold League. I would expect you to have fucked your build up even more than you have. But your build, I feel like, is going to be just behind in general multiple times. Like, look at your third command center, for instance. This bad boy is chilling. Okay, there we go. That was not too bad. It was like probably like 10 seconds and then you made an SV edit finally. Not that bad, but here we go. Watch, you're going for an attack now again, right? You're going to go harass him. Let's watch your production. Let's see how well you can keep up with your, your multitask. 
my point I'm trying to make here is, is I think you, again you, I think you would just be better off focusing heavily on your own build uh, here's another thing too here's another thing too you did say you were playing against your friend and I don't know if you and your friend both do the same build repeatedly but if you multitask like this and you do attacks against some players where it makes sense and it works because their build is weak against what you're doing and then you play against other players that do a different build entirely let's say this guy was going roaches and you kept running into roaches with your hellions <clears throat> there is a much higher chance that your build would fall short and fail pretty hard in the harassment department and when you do things like that or if you're trying to multitask before you can handle it because again if you're gold league I'm going to tell you right now you can't handle it uh, it makes your life a lot harder because you give away map control because you lose your army that's actually in somewhat contending the map. Are you sure you're gold league? I'm just going to I'm just going to ask you that question right now. I I don't know if you are. And if you are, I if you actually are gold league, I feel like you will be promoted. You're definitely not playing like a gold leaguer. Like, dude, you're you're mostly keeping up with your macro, and you also didn't even throw your army away right there. <laughs> Anyways, let's let's see, let's watch your supply though later on. Uh, one big point here is like right around 10 minutes I would say with, with this build around 10 minutes when you're going Hellbat Thor you could totally be maxed by 10 minutes and that's a realistic number for a gold league player I would say 10 minutes around 10 minutes could be like 20 seconds up or down if you max before 10 minutes that's pretty fucking fast but I would say a ten, roughly 10 minute max is not bad and so far this game, nothing's really died. Like, you, you've harassed, but nothing's really died. Realistically. It's very cheap on what's, what's been killed so far. Your pacing is not bad. You're, you're on par for like a 10 minute max. As long as you don't supply block all day. You're fat. Okay. I'm going to go back and look at your build again in a second here. Uh, all right. So. Realistically, realistically, you could have maxed that by 10 minutes, but you did a, you did things like, for instance, you, you were a supply block for a little bit there. You made Widow Mines instead of more Hellions, uh, which, which lowered your gas, and your gas is what your limiting factor is here too. So you're not actually able to max because the gas is limiting you on that. But if you just made Hellions, you would 100% max. Your SCV count is a little on the low end. Not that bad, though. So you're in the 70s. Uh... You're making sensor towers, like you're playing very like safe at this point now. Like you're just preparing for a defense. Overall, I'll just throw this out there. If you're gold league, you're not gonna be gold league for very long. Uh you know, my control by the way. Thank you very much for the four month resub. Welcome back. <clears throat> you are definitely not gonna be gold league for very long if you're capable of this play every game. Honestly. Like I'm you're this is not gold league. Uh, so if you just play ladder, I guarantee you will advance. But so now saying that I'm going to harp a little bit less on your macro because you are macroing better than gold league for fucking sure. Uh, we'll talk more about your decisions now, I guess. Okay. So your opponent's pushing you with a hydra lurker, right? So at this point in time, you have a nice spread. You have some tanks in the, in the back here. The only mistake I would say you made is you let Lings get in here. This is going to fuck you really bad. You should have, like, the second you saw this, you should have definitely raised this depot. Because these tanks would be so much more cost efficient if you could actually keep them going. 
allowing your tanks to get because they're about they're about to kill each other basically because lings are gonna get on top of them and they're gonna shoot each other most likely and they're just gonna die uh, so I mean that was obviously not ideal but keeping these tanks alive would have been nice and then if you see your opponent has lurkers and you have Thor the last thing you want to do is come at him from one angle and especially from one choke pointed angle so what I would say you should could have done is you could have let the get like if you could have you know kept this d wall up you could have stalemated this out a little bit by keeping tanks firing on over here you could have also had maybe half your thors stay here and maybe like take a chunk of your army and go up if you a move this if you a move this your opponent has eight lurkers which do not actually have hive upgrades yet but he does have eight lurkers and he's in a really bad spot for you. Um, like your your Thors are in the front. Your Hellbats are in the back. And again if this was Gold League. I would say Macro is your problem. But again I really feel like this is not Gold League anymore. Uh, because you both maxed pretty fucking fast. It just comes down to. Positioning of your army. Okay. So one way you can. One, one way you could do this. One way you could fix this in the future. This is an idea you could have. If you're going to sit there defensively and you're going to make sensor towers, you're just going to chill, you have your tanks kind of spread out. Your, <coughs> your setup was mostly nice. But let's just say this. Let's just say you had your army where like half of your army was like right here. Like we're talking like four Thors and like five Hellbats was right here in front of your natural because you're guarding your orbitals this way. And then the rest of your army was like in front of this base. And this it makes sense because you would do this before you're maxed out and if you're maxing at a relatively good time your opponent is going to have uh you know an, an army that's that should not be able to just steamroll you if you're macroing well so you you should be able to if you get attacked you should be able to you know just be like hey army go over there and help the side that's starting to get attacked it's not like you have to run across the map it would have to walk like from here to here and you'd be there and or this army would have to go from here to here and the thing is is both sides of your army were covered by siege tanks. You had siege tanks on both sides. So you actually have a decent setup on either side. Because you're covering your tanks with your army that could be spread. So literally all you would do is green box this, send that there, and you're done. To play extra, extra safe. You could do that. Because these are this base is vulnerable, this base is vulnerable. This base, not so much as soon as it becomes an, uh, a planetary. Um, so that could be a way you could cover your ass at this point in the game and once you have sensor towers it'll be really easy which is what you're making right now it'll be really easy to see what angle he's gonna, he's gonna come from because you could move your army in position before he gets there but we'll go ahead and speed it up now to when the fight happened and if you move everything up the ramp all at once against the lurker you're gonna die you're gonna take a bad fight okay so he he was feeling intimidated he backed off that's fine just as long as you go back into full macro mode and you kind of fix the problems that have occurred just now, like fix this, uh, you know, this ideally wouldn't have happened at all, but fix that, remake SCVs that died. You just lost, you're, you're losing some right now. He's killed four and he's going to start killing more because he's already in the mineral line. Uh, yeah, going from there. Drilling Claw Widow Mines, I would say not super necessary. Again, if we're talking anything plat or below, this is not necessary. Because this is going to require more attention from you, and you don't really need it. Also, on top of that, I would say, simply speaking, if we're if this was now platinum level, this would be a bad idea to go for right now, anyways, because he has lurkers, and lurkers are a direct counter to widow mines. So this is a waste of your investment. Like you should definitely, because it, it's taking away gas from your thors and your tanks, and it's also alleviating. It's like taking away from your hellbat supply. Which is better against Zergling. Like, Hellbats are better against Lings than Widow Mines are. Especially when the purpose is to cover your Thor tank. And then it's better to have more Thor tank against Lurker Hydra than it is to have Widow Mines. So, Widow Mine here, it makes no sense against his current composition. It doesn't mean that's going to be that forever. I don't know if he'll change it, but currently, Widow Mines are a bad idea. Yeah, like if he just has an overseer, he can kill your, your widow mines all day. 
Lurkers at range, what of mines. Okay, so you fixed your you fixed that. You need to definitely resaturate your gas. As soon, like this would be the priority, I would say. Fix that right away, because you're definitely having a gas problem. And again, a big reason why you're also having a gas problem is because you're making widow mines. It's it's making it harder to make Thor tank. I'm glad that you're going back into Hellions now. Yo, uh, overworked engineer. Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime, dude. Welcome to VFAM. Welcome, bro. And against this kind of an army, you, I would say you don't necessarily want to attack him. You want him to attack you. So what you could do is you could fortify yourself with tanks kind of like you have and then just kind of let it, let it happen. Like let him attack into you. And one way you could kind of go around, go do a roundabout way of dealing with this. If we're talking lower league, you could... Uh, I mean, you could scan ahead. You could see where the lurkers are, and then you could just move your tanks and see, like you know, move your whole army. And then, as soon as you get within range to siege the lurker, just siege your tanks, and then just sit there and just literally sit there, don't move. If you attack without your tanks, you're definitely gonna get screwed here. Like you're gonna lose more than it's worth. Your tanks are definitely what you want to be utilizing a bit more. And. uh... Yeah, this yeah, this game. I'm just gonna. I'm I'm no longer going to talk about very lack of micro. You, this is not a gold game. Uh, your your opponent is micromanaging lurkers back and forth, and you're micromanaging this army. I'm just gonna give you ideas. Uh, this is now like diamond. I'm gonna say, like high plat diamond. Um, because like. I just I don't I, I don't feel like this is fucking gold like dude at all, uh. Yeah, um. So okay, going around your base right. This is step one. Fix your economy, fix your economy. That needs to be fixed right away. While you're fixing your economy, fix your build too. Fix like uh for instance like your uh, your armories, making upgrades and all that kind of stuff like that. Uh, fix your gas at your natural. Fix your saturation at your third, and then with fixing all of this, send it to your fourth. Okay, that's that's a big one right there. Your economy is definitely being neglected pretty hard, and it's because you're tunnel visioning this. Uh, see this? Okay, so that what I just what I just saw there. This looks more goldy. Oh, if you focus yeah. too much on this, you sacrifice all of this shit, and yeah, your your economy does look pretty fucked up. Uh, you need to definitely, this is definitely the priority. That's, that's the priority for sure. You gotta make sure your shit keeps rolling well. Against lurkers though, I mean, I'm not gonna ever tell you, yeah, just f fucking A move it. Uh, I, it would be the ideal situation, but this would be one of those games when you would lose, and it's because your opponent is, uh, again, I would say this would be one of those games you'd play when you would say, oh, well, this opponent wasn't Gold League, and I am Gold League. But if you're able to play like you did, you won't be gold league for very long, and suddenly you're gonna ramp up to the next tier. This and you, you did say your friend was platinum, but yeah, all you have all you have to do against this is literally scan it and fucking siege your tanks. That's all you have to do. Scan it, siege your tanks. Sit there. Scan it, siege your tanks. Sit there. Scan it, siege your tanks. Sit there. Do not walk into Thor's. Do not, or sorry, do not walk into the lurkers with your Thor's. That is like the biggest, biggest thing. But this should not be. You should not be focusing on this very hard. This should not be like your primary focus of like what you're looking at the whole time. Okay, like you definitely want to prioritize this. Expand again. Stuff like that. Okay. Is this, what is these things? The changelings? Yeah, okay. Alright, and then now you have kind of restabilized your base. I would say getting another base would be ideal. Fixing your economy again. That's okay. This is being neglected way too long. This should. I'm gonna see what you're looking at. You're probably looking at your army a lot. Just know that the, the economy management never ends. It never ends. Ever. And you keep hearing, like, every time you hear that, you, like, if you hear mineral field depleted. 
Mineral field depleted. That should be a trigger to be like, okay, go back to my base and look at it. Because right now you're not doing anything anyways. You're, you're, you're creating a situation where you're going to force yourself to do something. But that is the... Like, you're... The big point I'm trying to make here is, is you haven't looked at your economy for a while and you're still not looking at it for portions of your base. The only thing you fixed was this saturation and that was it to go here. Which is good. That is good. But you have not fixed this and you have not fixed this. And this is critical for mech. Uh, I mean, you ha you're, you at least you're maxed now. But this is like future bank that you're not going to have. So if you lose this fight, you're gonna it's going to be just harder for you to remax. You have the right composition overall, except for the Widow Mines. Thor tank, Hellion would be great here. And you're microing it, I would say, a little bit incorrectly. You're, you're going a little too far forward. So think about it like this, okay? You see Zerg. You attack him. You literally A-move him, okay? You A-move him. Zerg A-moves you. If, if his composition is Hydra Lurker, you have Thor tank. You could A-move him. If he A-moves you and then he uh, burrows Lurkers, like he, he chooses to concave against you, he burrows Lurkers, all you'd have to do is maybe back up for just like two seconds while he's burrowing his Lurkers and then you siege your tanks and you, you just stand there. And if he does not unburrow his Lurkers and he goes forward, you will just take these incredibly strong trades against his army. And again, this is, uh, we're talking, this is not like fucking... GM masters we're talking this is like basic composition micro this game I've been very confused about how I want to talk about it because again it does not seem like a cold game but in general bait like just force a siege by him and siege yourself either do that or if your opponent if you kill his lurkers or if his lurkers are not in the front of his army if he ever takes a fight against you if you if you collide and you start shooting him Immediately siege if his lurkers are not in the front. If his lurkers are not in the front. The point I'm trying to make here is is you always keep your Thoras with your with your uh, with your tanks. You never send your Thoras by themselves outwards. Ever. Uh, because if you if you do that, you constantly open yourself up to counterattacks from like a flank to kill your tanks. And you also I you 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 give your Thoras pepper damage, like He's going to do like a lurker shot, a couple lurker shots. Hydras are going to poke your Thors outside of range of tanks. You never want any of that to happen because it's going to whittle your Thors down like this right here. Like your Thors are going to start getting chewed apart just because you're getting impatient about how you move your army. So like right now, siege your tanks and leave your Thors there. And you will crush his ass. Do not chase forward. You're chasing forward. Let him just get pounded by your tanks and have your Thors cover the tanks. Again, against Lurker. <laughs> and then once he runs away, unseed your tanks and move everything forward. Never leave your tanks by themselves. Yo, Juan, thank you very much for the, uh, the sub, dude. Much love. I'm not going to pick up the phone. I'm doing replay analysis. This is a YouTube video. Uh, just never, like, never send your Thors by themselves. And you got to be very careful about how you choose the fight too. Never, never move into a choke point against Lurker. This is the second time you're doing it this game. Uh, so, if your opponent, if you're worried about your opponent doing something like, all right, let let like think about this, okay? Think about this. Imagine this, because you're definitely spending a lot of fucking time microing, and you're not spending a lot of time macroing your base. You're at this point now. I would say like I'm glad you're making a bunch of command centers. That's nice, but I would love it if you had more than four bases. Like, you actually macroed like crazy up to this point, but you have not done shit macro-wise in the last, like, five minutes. Up until you threw down five command centers at once. So, if you're going to do a macro focus, less micro is totally available there. And you could take a little bit shittier trades like you are here, but you should have this base already. You should have this base already. This base should probably be getting started to be set up. Stuff like that. You should have 80 SCVs. Right now you have 78, you're close, which, that's fine. But all your SCVs also should be optimally mining, not 14 out of 2 and 3 sitting there. Not leaving your gas still fucked up ever since that first fight. 
This is becoming fucked up and you're still missing an SCV on that gas. This is the only base that looks mostly fine. Because it's your newest base. Like, you're definitely not prioritizing your economy uh, as much as you should be. So, if you were going to do something, you were you going to... Basically, you're going to do things that are like less time invested into micro, more time invested into macro. One thing you could do to also increase this dynamic is you could green box like three Thors and a couple Hellbats. Literally, we're talking like three Thor, three Hellbat. It does not have to be a big chunk of your army. Or like four Thors. And you could just be like alt three or some, sh some, some number that doesn't exist that you own yet. Alt two, because Widow Mines are fucking worthless anyways. And you could just go like this. A move the opposite side of the map. If he's going to make you chase lurkers all day with hydras, you could just be like, okay, well, I am now, he's between my base and me, and I'm going to go back to my base to defend that. He's going to brush up against the planetary, and I'm going to siege him with tanks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How about you just send, like, three Thors and three Hellbats to go attack his the opposite side of his base, like, attack into his main, and your Thors will come over here, kill this base if it exists, kill this base, kill this base. Because he now puts himself in a situation where he's putting himself between your army and your base. So your base can kill him because you have planetaries. You can repair it. You can it can put up a decent fight. You can start sieging tanks around here. You can siege your tanks over here. So no matter what way he goes, he has to run through siege tanks, which is not ideal for him. And then you don't even have to look at those stories you just sent out there, the opposite side of the map, and you're just going to start killing his fucking production and killing his economy instead of chasing him with everything. You could do that as well. That would be a nice trick you could do because he's trying to make you chase him. And that would put pressure on him to make him do something. If you did that. I really want you to stop making widow mines. Uh, so you're making bases. You're taking bases. This is good. Making orbitals. Be really careful too about building your buildings like this. Try, if you can, try to build your buildings in a line where it leaves a doorway. Like, if you built these command centers like, like this, and this, and this, or like there, there, and there, and then these command centers could be like there, and there. Like, that's better than doing this. Because what's happening here now is if... These are not planetaries. These are orbital commands, right? So if he shows up over here, you're fucking yourself over positionally. Because you're, you're, you'll have to lift off or lose the base. Because these can't defend themselves and they're blocking the shit out of you. Uh, at this point, lings should not be a factor. They shouldn't matter to you, really. Because you should have hellbats with blue flame. And you should be able to be like, oh, lings? Pfft, roasted. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and uh, you're going to need to scan a lot more often if you ever... Like, if you're up against Lurkers, never just push like that. Like, you pushed into Lurkers and then sieged. Like, you're, you are literally going into Lurker range and you're sieging there. Like, deep into... Like, these two Lurkers right here can shoot all the way back to, like, the far back tank. So like half your tanks died before you even shot once. So if you're if your opponent's gonna play like this, if you're gonna play the game of Alright, Lurker Hydra versus Tank Thor, don't be afraid to play the game out slowly. Literally. Like what you could do, what you could do is you could be like, okay, I have a planetary here. How about I make another planetary here? How about I make another planetary here? How about another one there? How about another one here or here or whatever? Another one there. And you could be like, sensor tower, sensor tower, sensor tower, sensor tower, sensor tower. And then you just control your side of the map. And you can watch it where he goes with sensor towers. And you can do things then, like setting up this shit. Don't have the goal in mind to kill his base straight up. If your opponent's going to bait you into lurkers like this. You could just set up a good base yourself. So that you have a strong, stable army, because I'm going to let you know right now, Thor tank is better than Hydra Lurker. It really is. Uh, so then, if you just give yourself a nice fortification on your base, 
suddenly all these little runbys that he can do are way easier to deal with because you have a solid fortification of the map and you crawl, you slow crawl. Let's say you have like right here, a straight line from this point all the way down. So you own this base all the way up to this base. And then this base is like all your bases are getting closer to mining out. We're saying, let's say it's like a 25 minute game and you're like, I want to take this base now. You could just like slow crawl like a sensor tower right there. And you could like slow push your tanks to control this now. And you can see where he goes to sensor towers and scans. And then if you see your opponent's going to do something like he's going to run down the map, you could run down the map with him and siege your tanks or something like that. Because at the very least, that, that would be an easier way to like slowly control the map against someone who's better than you and who is trying to make you chase lurkers around all day. Another thing is, is when he overcommits into your base, you could, like I said before, you could just like delete some of your control group out, like alt to it, like some Thor Hellbat and just go to his, go kill his fucking t his tech and his production. Go opposite or where his army is. And I guarantee you're going to get a lot of damage done doing that. Uh, but mainly, stop looking at your army as much and worry more about controlling the map more. Because you do not have enough of a bank right now to really remax here. You, you do not. If you just had more money, you could lose this army and remake it, but you cannot remake this army because right now you only have 11 factories, which is not bad. That's not bad. That's a lot. But at 16 minutes, you could totally have like 16 factories or like 18 factories. I'm not even fucking kidding. Because you should be so rich that you could afford that. Because you should be playing a style that controls your side of the map, which is what you've been doing ever since your Hellion Harass. Your Hellion Harass, like at four minutes, was like the last thing you did, or five minutes, aggressively. And then it's just been defensively most of the game up until this point when you just threw your army away. But you, you never expanded beyond ten minutes. So you don't have enough bank now. Like you need to be rolling expansions, rolling your workers so that this kind of shit doesn't happen. Like this is bad. You're microing so fucking hard that you're letting shit like this kill you. Just like insta rebuild it. And let's take a quick peek again. Look at your SCVs. Not mining anything still. This base just died, so that's not mining. This base is mining out, and you haven't touched, and you still haven't fixed that gas. You have not touched this base in a long time. This base is still fucked up. This base is fresh. This base is fresh. No SCVs at either one of them. So you're dev, you're you are way too fucking tunnel visioned on your army, and the reason why is because you're way too focused on your opponent's side of the map. What you should do is you should. Go back to the beta gym tactics. Like, I, I, the, the more that, okay, so I'm gonna say this. I feel like you and your friend have the first 10 minutes mostly down. Like you both maxed relatively fast and you even did it while there was some harass going on. That is above gold level. And I would say even above platinum level. That's like diamond uh, minimum. What you The way you guys played the first 10 minutes of the game. But after the next, uh, after the first 10 minutes, you're, fucking the game is plummeted really hard and if you just focused the way you focus on the first 10 minutes minus the aggression if you just focused on like the setup like make SCVs make SCVs make SCVs you were mostly diligent about it for them like other than a couple times it went pretty well but you like never you never fix your economies ever that needs that's like a big priority it's it's called upkeep and you don't have any of that really like, you just kind of neglect, neglect that super hard do that shit and that's, your games are going to feel a lot more rich and more manageable. And then, if, and then if you send out an army and attack your opponent and you're like, well, shit, he has lurkers. This is bad. You should be able to lose an army and remax it realistically. Because you should have so much fucking money that you can do that. That you can remake it. And instead of sending your army out again a second time to go suicide, what you could do then, if, your opponent, if you think your opponent's going to go for this like lurker style, you could just go for like this planetary setup like I talked about where it's set planetary sensor tower turrets and whatever. Just play this like consume the map defensive style if you really feel like you have to because it's focused on macro. And then if your opponent takes a bad fight against you, counterattack him then. Then you then you go counterattack. And if your opponent doesn't take a fight against you, just know that Thor tank is better than Hydra Lurker because Thor tank can siege it better. 
It, it has the ability to take a better trade, a better fight. That's your whole problem. You're focusing so fucking hard on micro. Like, I think, I think you're the example of somebody that is overly confident in the fact that you think you can multitask. And you really did a... I will commend you on your first 10 minutes. It was mostly... It was definitely diamond level. It was, it was definitely not gold level. But then after 10 minutes, it definitely is gold level. You neglect so much of your resources. And you don't manage... You don't upkeep shit after that. And now you're running into a problem where you have no gas. It'd be nice if you had another 2,200 gas in the bank right now. Like he has it. Like he's depleted and you haven't touched 2,200 gas here. And you you, you just started mining off of your uh, your fifth base. And you haven't even touched your sixth base yet. Um, and we're at 21 minutes almost. And your fourth base and your third base have been killed. So those gases are now gone. So your gas income is complete garbage. Because you weren't upkeeping your, your production for so long. And now, if all this guy does is he kills your, your fresh bases, <clears throat> like your newest bases, you're, there's no way you win because you're starved out. Okay, you're reestablishing yourself. Your opponent's getting a bit impatient, and he's actually throwing... Like, <clears throat> you did a good job actually holding on there at the end. Your opponent threw away a lot of army. And uh, you definitely have... Because of that, you've been able to kind of re-fortify yourself, re-establish yourself. And your opponent now is in the situation of... He's mining out. You actually could win this game right now. You totally could win this game right now. All you have to do is kill new bases. Do not kill every base. Kill new bases. So kill the bases that are closest to you that are fresh. If you go south, it would be this base and this base. If you go north, it would be the two bases on the top. But I would not say go to his main base and try to kill his main and shit. Because, uh, yeah, like if you go to the north bases, your expansion on the top is easier, going to be easier to defend. If you go to the south bases, your production is going to be easier to defend. Based off of if he counters you. <clears throat> but yeah, if you just starve him out, by killing his expansions, you win the game right now. So I would say going through the very center of the map and killing creep is probably... It sounds like a good idea, but it's not the priority right now. And you're killing his base in the center here. This base is one of his lower saturated bases, but it's still a good one. And if you don't go here now and you go into his base, this is a mistake. This is definitely a mistake if you go into his base. You might win the game with it, but I would say this is not actually the better move I would say this would be the better move because fucking up his economy and then fucking up his economy again means he won't be able to replace what dies because he has no income anymore I'm glad you backed up right there I hope you do not go back in again <clears throat> you definitely should kill this base right now you're giving him a chance to come back if you go in there again I'm, I'm glad you have used, okay yeah good And now suddenly you're forcing him into you, which is way better, and you're killing his base at the same time. Now you've starved him again. This is fucking money. This is super good. So now his economy, his economy now sucks compared to yours because you've just killed two of his bases. So this is exactly what you, you kind of fucked around here a little bit too long, but this is exactly what you should have done. And now what you should do is go to the opposite side of the... Like, you should go back in a safe location to the, either the edge of his creep or all the way to your base. I would say edge of his creep is the most logical one because you could kill creep safely then because there's not... You could always back up the off creep. But if you backed your army up like this, okay? You go this way. You go down. Scan, kill creep. Scan, kill creep. Scan, kill creep. Kill this base. Kill this base. That would be the best thing you could do right now. Because if you killed these two bases, he has no income and you'd have to start over again. 
And he doesn't have a lot of money, and he doesn't have a lot of drones either at this point. So he's pretty fucked if you kill this base right here. This base would end him, basically. And killing it straight down from where you are now is risky, because you would have to run through his army. And that is a risk. He kind of just donated you a lot of supply right there. This is a move. So if you're like Masters League and shit like that, or like GM, I would say attacking his base right now would be fine because you could handle micromanaging your army and your base at the same time. But the reason why I say for you at a lower level should not do this is because, check this out. Okay, this is, this is how we're gonna end this replay analysis. I'm gonna look at how many times you look at your base. How many times do you actually look at your base? And let's look at production too. So you are you are producing. <coughs> you spent your money up to this point. That is good. But now, do you ever manage your SCVs ever from now? And we'll, we'll actually pause it and just see what the where where it's looking. You fix those. These have been fixed for the most part. But now you're starting to mine shit out again uh, at this base. That's it. Like you're gonna have five SCVs chilling here in a second, which is not the end of the world. But let's see. Uh, this base is six over. It's starting to have problems. This base is uh, per it's properly saturated, but it is also oversaturated at the same time, so could be fixed. Like this command center could land there or some shit, and you could, you know, be a little. It's, it's greedy because it's an orbital, but you could definitely could send some more workers somewhere else. And now let's see if this like these problems with your economy ever get fixed throughout the whole fight. Uh, my guess is probably will not. Okay, let's see. So, let's let's see the shit. Let's see the shit. I like that you made a couple command centers before that started. You're trying to keep, you're like you have the goal in mind of keeping your macro going. You're staring at your army. You're you know like your army is important right now. It is definitely a big part of the game right now. You're killing a base like I wanted you to. This is good. You are you are still macroing units during the fight. That is good. You're still looking at your army. I know it's important. But like priority right now is get the fuck out of here. You don't need to be here anymore. And you're you're you know, you're like, I smell that blood in the water. I'm like, okay, here we go. Look at your base. You're grabbing a hellbat. You didn't do anything at your base. You're just, you're really eager to kill your opponent. Too eager, I would say. The game is yours if you just fucking starve him. <laughs> but you're risking, like, I'm, I'm not gonna say you, you, you might even win right now, because he does that, which is, that's a mistake by him, right? Like, that's, you're like, wow, okay, thanks for throwing your army away. Uh, that's not always gonna happen. But right now, you have not fixed any economy this whole fight. I'm glad that you macro at least though, for the most part. Like right now you're not, but most of the time you are. So that's that's a definitely a step in the right direction. But you're so micro heavy. You're staring at your base. I don't know what you're doing. Okay, you made orbitals. What what just happened there? Did you actually move SCVs? No, you didn't. You were macroing is what you were doing. You were staring at that and macroing off factories, and then you made orbitals. There's, there's, you, dude, you have like a lot of potential. I'll say that right now. You have a lot of potential, but you're, you're, you're too aggressive. Versus a player who is better you will struggle so hard because you're like all gas pedal like you're, you're just like trying to end the game as fast as you can and you're putting yourself in these situations that are like if I don't kill him now I'm fucked because you just like, like this attack started like five minutes ago you have not done anything with your base since then and this is you've actually rallied your SCVs over here I saw that line uh, yeah, all your commencers got rallied here, so your commencers flying over there. That's not a big deal. It's a, that's obviously a mistake. 
but like you're just not up to you're not upkeeping your economy at all so your economy just dips and dips and dips and dips and dips and it's because you're all you're so focused on winning the game with this army when you should be focused on winning the game through control This is not control. This is chaos right here. Like this this is like if I make one mistake I'm fucking dead. But I mean you're going to win obviously cuz your opponent fucked up a few times as well. But this just shows you you were down so much earlier in this game. Because again, you lost your, your new expansions and you did not expand beyond, like, it was like 16 minutes until you took your fifth base. From 10 minutes to 16 minutes. It was a super long time. And the reason why you almost lost the game earlier is because you didn't do anything for those six minutes other than try to micro against Lurkers. Just macro and let your opponent fucking kill himself uh, on tanks and shit. Like, try to zone him, but make sure you're keeping tabs on macro. Stop trying to walk in the in the... Stop trying to walk into the middle of Zerg territory and just establish footing there and be like, you're dead. I'm going to fucking kill you here. Yeah. Like, that's just, it's it's a bit over eager. And the reason why it's over eager is because you're not, you're, you are not multitasking your macro behind this. You are putting yourself all in with this repeatedly. So when you play against someone who can defend this, who also macros at the same time, which you will eventually run into that, you will die. Lots of potential, but definitely room to improve with your, your the way you're optimizing your time. I hope that makes sense. Like, your first 10 minutes were not bad. I was impressed for the fact that you said you're gold league. And then the, the rest of the game, I definitely could see it more. Because you, you just tunnel vision micro way too hard. Just know that your micro is less of a... Like, your micro... Let me, say, let me say it like this. This is the final word I'll leave you with on this. Uh, this is this is now the real final word I will leave you with on this analysis, which has been super fucking long. What you need to do, okay, in the future, is you need to think about this concept. You can only micro once you've finished your job with macro. And the job never ends. It's like a checkpoint. So once you've done a checkpoint of macro and you know you're good for the next like at least minute, one minute, you can now use that time to micro if you really want to micro. But until you have fixed your macro, you macro, you macro, you macro, you macro, then you micro. You don't just stop, ma stop macroing altogether and go full micro because all that does to you is it puts you in a, in a pressure situation where if you don't win the next fight you have, you're fucked. That's all it does to you. You can lose the fight and still win the game if you macro the whole time. But if you stop macroing and you lose the fight, your chances of losing the game go way up because you have nothing to fall back on. So micro when you don't need to macro anymore. But just know every like 30 seconds to one minute, you always should be checking your macro. And you should be paying attention to shit like mineral field depleted, gas geyser depleted. So you, then when you hear that shit, you're like... Fix, 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 fix. Expand again. Fix, expand again. Mostly good, though. You have, again, you have a lot of potential. Uh, do that, though, and your games are going to be so much better. And don't be, do not be afraid as well to, like, control the map with planetaries if your opponent's really fucking annoying. Like, just literally cut the map in half with PFs and turrets. And, uh, like, one turret, one PF, a sensor tower. Next entrance, same thing. Next entrance, same thing. So you can see cloaked units and PF can guard you while you can reposition your tanks repeatedly and it will make your opponent's life so much harder and if they're going mass hydras they're going to be like well this sucks ass it's going to be way harder for your opponent to deal with that and then you can just like slowly consume the map like you could then t take this base and this becomes like a planetary outpost you could take this base it becomes a planetary outpost and you could just shove the zerg into like a corner with sieges anyways that's all for me I hope it makes sense I hope it helps uh Thank you for doing an analysis, though. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys, everyone who watched it, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I will see you all in the next one. So until next time, uh, good luck with your Terran games. And peace, guys. Goodbye. See ya.